Aloha, I'm Tanya Joaquin, host of Living 808. I have the privilege of being your moderator for Cook and Drink Along for our Hawaii Food and Wine Festival. So welcome, everyone. We're going to have a great night here, and we have all-star lineup. We have Chef Ben from Austin, the perfect steak and a great Brussels sprout side dish. You're going to love that. And bourbon. I have to tell you, I got a chance to try both the drinks yesterday with mixologist extraordinaire Jen Ackrell. So you're going to love this. I'm going to walk you through exactly what you have, and you can ask questions through this. So a few house rules. You can ask those questions at any time, but please do it in the chat function. Sometimes when we've done these events and people have not been muted, we've heard some other conversations going on in the background. So unless you want us to hear that, which we don't recommend, <laughs> go ahead and put it on mute. Uh, that's the best way to do this. But we're having a lot of fun. We arranged a beautiful backdrop here at 53 by the sea, and we can't wait to get started. But before we do that, I'd like to introduce a good friend who is the co-founder and the CEO of the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival, who put on this great event so we can still enjoy uh, many of the offerings and cook and drink along at home. It's Denise Shamaguchi. Okay. Thank you, Tanya. And thank you to all of you for joining us again in the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival Virtual Kitchen for our Armstrong Produce. Armstrong Produce presents Cook and Drink Along with HFWF series. Tonight, we get to make a gourmet meal at home with, oops, hold on one second. Something is missing here. Okay, sorry. With this, <laughs> tonight, we get to make a gourmet meal at home with a special cooking lesson by 53 by the Seas corporate executive chef, Lance Kosaka, and we'll pair it with two Maker's Mark slow crafted bourbon cocktails prepared by one of our festival mixologists, Jen Acro, and learn a little bit about Maker's Mark from their diplomat, Dave Kearns. Thank you to Maker's Mark for being part of tonight's event and for keeping everyone's glass full. Before we start, I'm excited to let you know that tickets to the 10th annual Hawaii Food and Wine Festival are on sale now. We are taking every precaution to ensure the safety of our attendees and participants. This year, we will feature about 20 celebrity chefs paired with our local chef talent to create, to create much smaller dining experiences at our local restaurants. Your ticket purchase will support the restaurant industry as well as our visitor industry partners and other small businesses. Events are starting to sell out, so go to hawaiifoodandwinefestival.com for a full schedule and talent lineup and be sure to make a table reservation before it's too late. On Saturday, we are also hosting a safe virtual Halloween party. HMAA presents Keiki in the Kitchen, Dress Up and Decorate with HFWF. Keiki are invited to dress up and decorate with us on Saturday, October 31st. It's free to sign up your kids and decorate alongside our celebrity chefs as they create their very own Halloween cupcakes. Next week will be our first mocktail event, Dietrich Insurance Presents, Hawaii's Best Mocktails, featuring even more HFWF mixologists. The mocktail at home kit comes with the famous lobster roll and popular birria style quesadilla from Feast by John Masabara. We hope you're loving this cook and drink along series and we'll be back with even more virtual events after the festival. So stay tuned for more details. Finally, I wanna urge all of you to check out our new digital content platform, hashilife.com, which features stories behind the many chefs, winemakers, mixologists, and others in our community who come together year after year to make our festival possible. And a special thank you goes out to our presenting sponsor, Mark Teruya and Armstrong Produce, who have made these virtual cooking, cook and drink along experiences possible. Mahalo and I hope you enjoy. We are excited to get started. It's cook and drink along. We are gonna start with a drink. If you've been to the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival, Jen Ackle always has one of the longest lines. That's how we met there. And I was enjoying a drink you did once with the Pop, the pop Rocks on it. Oh, that was called the, the Pastel Trailer Park. <laughs> we, did, we did that on Maui, huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that was super fun. I learned not to put pop rocks out in the humid uh, white year. Not a good combo. It wasn't great. I mean, it was fun, <laughs> but it was like a like constantly trying to keep the pop rocks like in the container so they didn't get too soggy. But it was fun. Mixologists, a part of the <laughs> occupational hazard of that. What do we have here? Let's oh. unbag this. <laughs> okay, so if you guys have your bags that you have, if you haven't already unpacked them, let's get those. Mm -hmm. You should know that these are. These are treat bags. 
um, but they can also have a little bit of a trick in them if you uh, oh. rely on their structural um, <laughs> integrity. So <laughs> just very carefully, I would pick them up by the bottles if you're going to pick them up like that. So this is the first drink that we're going to make. And in this bag, you will have a bottle of the Maker's Mark bourbon, Perfect. some ready cut calamansi, and some fever tree soda water. So that's the first bag. And then in your second bag, um, for those that have purchased the bags, uh, this is your already made cocktail. Those that haven't purchased it, we're gonna make that together later. So this is your already made um, on the mark cocktail. And then, oh gosh, get in there. Okay, I know, right? It was a trick. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some grapefruit zest and that's gonna be used later. So we're gonna get this out of the way. It. Carefully. Being very careful with it too. Oh my gosh. I yeah. ask you too, I know that you used to work with Chef Lance before, so you're familiar with his perfect steak. So mm -hmm. you knew what to make with the bourbon, right? I did, I did. I thought because this is a steak and bourbon mm -hmm. seminar, cook along, drink along, um, that we would have people that are bourbon fans yes. and that there was no need to hide it. Like sometimes when we do food and wine things, you want to do something that's for the masses, for everybody, right? right? Mm -hmm. So doing a drink like a highball with calamansi in it can be a little high risk because mm -hmm. there's going to be some people that are like looking for the vodka cocktail. Right. And that's not going to be, no. they're not going to be super <laughs> excited about it. So I wanted to do that because I knew that it would be a great starter drink. Um, open up your palate. Um, the fizz from the soda water is going to get your palate going. The, the citrus in there, just a little tiny bit to get it revved up. And then the second drink, the On the Mark, I know Chef's Perfect Steak is, I've had it, it's delicious, it's one of my favorites, has a little bit of spice to it. Yes. So the On the Mark has a little bit of sweetness to it, just to kind of balance that out. So you have some fire from Chef, a little sweetness from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much a, matches your personality too. And, and I love the ice. So I had oh yeah, to have this hey, you know what you guys should do? In, uh, in your kit too, you'll have one of these, I'm gonna unwrap it, so I'm keeping this nice and cold, mm -hmm. but this is that beautiful crystal clear ice wow. from On The Rock. Um, Vanna White yes. presentation. Da, 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 <laughs> da, da, da. But you can see it's totally clear. Get this out now and give it a minute. Um, mine's been out for a little bit. So we're gonna temper the ice. Temper is a word that you're gonna hear again from Chef later on. Um, basically what you're doing is you're taking the ice from like super, super, super freezing cold to not so super freezing cold. It's not going to ruin your drink if you don't temper the ice. Okay. It's not. It, just what's going to happen is the ice is going to crack um, because it's going from a really cold temperature to a really warm temperature and it just snaps. Mm -hmm. You know how that happens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the secret to the <laughs> cocktail too. And we can order that if we want to. Oh, absolutely. Spoil with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Rock, um, Hawaii, uh, I believe is there. Is it there? Yes. On the Rock, Hawaii. All right. com. There yeah. you go. Get your ice there. Those guys make some really cool stuff. There's. Collins uh, ice cubes that are like long and thin. So okay. they have all of them. The other thing too, uh, let's get your ingredients first. Should we do the first drink? Let's do it. Let's I think stop so. Stop talking. Let's start making drinks. <laughs> They're tired of hearing us All right. Yeah, I know, right? We're chatting. They're probably mm -hmm. already drank. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't already started your drink, um, it says to get a Collins glass, but what we found is that um, the cubes might be a little too square for the Collins glass. Um, if you use a rocks glass like I'm going to use, it's not going to ruin the drink at all. It's going to be totally fine. So okay. just get a glass is the most important thing. Um, so you're going to have a glass, uh, you need your maker's mark, Yep. you need your soda water, and then your little calamansi. So if there's three in your kit, um, you can start with one, and if you want to add another one, that's cool. And if you want to add all three, or if you want to use three for three different drinks, that works too. Taste. Um, yeah, so I, I like to put that in first. Okay. So I'm going to do one because I think today I want a little more whiskey than calamansi. All right. So I brought a couple... Here's a jigger, here's a jigger, here's a jigger. I'm a bartender, I have a lot of jiggers. Yeah, but... You might not have a jigger at your house, but you might have things at your house that you could use for a jigger. This is a thing, this is a thing. So when the recipe says an ounce and a half, mm -hmm. you can just do one and a half things. Like right? a little shot glass, your yeah. stealers. My stealer, <laughs> yeah, I guess stealers. Um, or you can use one of these. So if you use this part here as, okay. your, as your measure, right? And you just do one and a half, the same thing we're gonna do here, one and a half. It works out really well. The cool thing about that technique right. is that you can take a, a, a recipe that you like and turn it into a large format cocktail. So mm. instead of using one and a half ounces and you use one and a half things and that thing is a cup, like a measuring cup. So you use one and a half cups of whiskey, three quarters of a cup of citrus, half a cup of apricot liqueur, 
and then you have a nice whiskey sour. <laughs> there you go too. In a large format. All right, so let's get to making it. So we're gonna do one and a half things. So get your thing or your jigger if you're fancy, if you have it. So we're gonna do our one and a half things of Maker's Mark in the glass. All right, and that's so after one and a half. Yeah, put the calamansi in first. If someone doesn't have calamansi and doing their own, could they use a lemon or do you just want lime, preferably? Is it better? You can use any citrus that you want. Okay. All right. It's really like the, the drink is about the expression of the bourbon mm. and the calamansi or citrus is just there for some like fun and giggles. Um, the soda water, if you haven't opened this already, be very careful because it can oh, be I'm a little away. I'm a, a social distance busy. from you just in case. And by the way, anyone, I, I don't know if I mentioned, you can turn on your camera if you want us to kind of see what you're doing at home or if you don't, then that's fine too. So I am going to then put in my ice cube. Um, okay. I did not pre-open this. It has this little cute... Oh, like a little yeah, a little tape. plastic tapey mm -hmm. thing on there. there so go. rip that off, open it up. And I'm gonna get the ice cube out, and then I'm just gonna use this. I'm not. I'm just doing this so I don't splash us. All right. Looks and like then we're following along. We're doing good. Everybody, yeah. all right? Colleen. Let's see. Yeah. Hi guys. Yeah. Thumbs up if we're. We're doing okay. Yeah. Don't need to slow down. <laughs> who all right. Thanks, who has jiggers and who used Megan. jiggers? Jiggers. We use jiggers. And who, uh, Dave, I think we're Dave, talk I to from Maker's Mark. Who bit. used a thing? A thing. <laughs> Nobody, <laughs> everyone had jiggers, okay. Okay, bonus <laughs> if anyone has a steel or a shot glass yeah, out there. Yeah, who has a steel thing? Okay, so it says, it says four ounces or four things of this. I really am just going to pour it on there just to give it. Again, it's about the expression of the whiskey. So I'm going to give it a little stir. Um, if we weren't on camera and we were at my house by myself, I would stir with my finger and you couldn't do that. So there you go. There is our, thank you, mm -hmm. our Maker's Mark highball. Yes. So there. Highballs, the cool thing about highballs, you probably have drunk a highball before and didn't know it. Okay, like what? You like, a, have you had a, a vodka and soda? Um, a few over the years. Gin, gin and tonic? <laughs> yes. Uh, how about a Captain and Coke? <laughs> I guess I'm a highball, closet highball so drinker. Are highballs. highballs are really simple to make. It's just a spirit and something fizzy. Okay. Yeah, they've been around forever, but they're just kind of cool. They're super cool now. Love that. All right, let's save that for Chef Lance. I think okay. he's a highball guy. And let's then do this right here. We'll put him right there. And if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and chime in on the chat. And what's the second drink that we're the be doing? The second drink is called On the Mark. Okay. And again, because I know that Chef's drink, uh, Chef's drink, <laughs> Chef's drink is right there, but Chef's steak has a little bit of spice to it. Again, I wanted to add a little bit of a little sugar in there. So if you are going to be making this at home with us. Um, so first of all, actually, everybody else has the, the, the kids that bought the kit. You guys have it in here. You don't need to do anything right now, except maybe very carefully open the lid because it's, it's on there pretty good. So it didn't leak in your car on the way home and your car smell like a delicious cocktail, <laughs> which could be hard to explain <laughs> to some people. No, <laughs> I'm not it's super sad. Okay. But then for everyone that's making it with me, let's get your, uh, maker's mark. Right. I'm going to actually use a jigger for this one just for fun. Cause I have one. So it's going to be two ounces of Maker's Mark. All right. Put that in there into our mixing glass. Lindsay has a team thing. I don't know. She didn't save a stealer. So oh, awesome. Supporting another team. So this is the apricot liqueur, the, the Rothman and Winter apricot liqueur. And why does that pair so well with the Maker's Mark? There is, it's just the, the whiskey and the apricot liqueur just go very nicely together. Mm -hmm. It's like a really cool dance that they do. Mm -hmm. And they, they seem to bring out the best parts of each other. And then this guy right here, the Grand Classico is our little bitter bit. And we're gonna put a half an ounce of that what? in. A bitter bit. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> bit, bit. <laughs> Bitters are hot though. <laughs> so we're gonna put a half an ounce of our Grand Classico bitter in there. And then just to round out the orchard theme, we're gonna put two dashes of the peach bitters okay. in there. And the peach and the apricot, so those work well A little together. orchardy, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were saying yesterday that for me, the, in my head, I think of fall when I think of those flavors mm -hmm. together, especially when paired with whiskey, but they're really summer drinks or mm -hmm. summer uh, flavors. So everybody now, okay. um, get your ice cube. Uh, if you're at home, you can put it into your glass. Give it a little mix. This we're going to do a little stir here, and then we're going to put it over a fresh ice cube. Okay. Real quick. I go through all of these ice cubes in this whole entire thing. <laughs> there we go. And so I'm just going to do this for dilution, yeah. chill it down a little bit, 
Um, the larger the ice cube, mm -hmm. the longer it takes to kind of chill it and dilute it because because of the surface area of the ice cube, it doesn't melt, which is the great part about having large ice cubes for your whiskey because it'll cool it down, but it doesn't overwater it. I always said just, oh, it's, you know, very bougie. It looks cool when you get, to, when we used to get to go out to, to bars and in the, so forth. In the old days. <laughs> <laughs> the good old days. But you said there's a taste difference yeah. too as well. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about this, that you don't really recognize the taste difference. Okay, so everybody, we'll get back oh, to the ice in a second. Okay. Um, let's go pour this over the ice. If you're making it from home, mm -hmm. you can just dump as much as you want. Just know this is a full cocktail in here. This is like three or four cocktails in this glass, so. I have one question from Robin. How much of the pre-made mix do we use? I would go like about four ounces. Four ounces. Yeah. All right. Or two fingers. Oh, is that good? This is, this is an actual measure. You is that do, a hack? Yeah, you could do two okay. fingers. What if you there have you fat go. fingers? If you have fat fingers, then good for you. <laughs> <laughs> four or two fingers. Okay. There you go. But yeah, it doesn't matter. It just, you know, just you can start small and then add, add to it if you want some more later. We're going to add a little bit of the grapefruit zest that was in your kit mm -hmm. to the top of that. But we were talking about ice. The, um, you, you don't notice it the first time that you have the clear ice. So if you get clear ice at your house and you make cocktails with it, you're like, oh, these are really cool. It's clear, it's really pretty. Yes. And then you have no more clear ice and you have to go back to refrigerator ice or freezer ice. And then you taste the Everything difference. Yeah, the you taste like your freezer, the yeah. metal, um, the old chicken that's in there maybe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, clear ice is the way to go. But so yeah, that's, that's the, uh, the cocktails that we're making tonight. Okay, well, I want to try to, but I do have a few questions I'm going to get to. Uh, Stacy's asking, does the mix include the maker's mark or do you add it? Oh, yeah, the mix does include the maker's mark. You guys, this guy is ready to go. So mm -hmm. if it has no label on it, you just pour it into the glass. Already, mm -hmm. it's already ready already. <laughs> <laughs> they know exactly what we're talking about. We haven't even drank yet. I know, by the way. <laughs> it's probably the problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you about the bitters as we talked mm. about that too. You know, you hear about a, a lot of, drinks using that and so forth. Um, but what do you like about the bitters and what that adds to the drink? So the, the drink itself has a, a, an inherent sweetness. The, the Maker's Mark is, it's a, so, the, the cool thing about Maker's Mark is that it's a softer bourbon, mm -hmm. um, not a lot of rye in it, not high rye, has a little bit of um, red winter wheat in it that makes it a softer, softer spirit. Mm -hmm. So when then you add a sugar to it, like the apricot liqueur, it can get a little like, like a little flabby, sweet tea, no. sweet tea and flabby. Mm -hmm. And so when you add those bitter notes to it, it mm. pops it up and makes it a little zippy. And then when you add that grapefruit peel on the end, there's a little like inherent bitterness in the grapefruit peel too, mm -hmm. that does its own little sexy thing on the side too. All right. Yeah. Okay. You're talking the language out there. So you just uh, sl slice a sliver of the yeah. grapefruit peel off. Well, I'm going to do this with the guard today. Cause yesterday I did not do with the guard <laughs> and it made everybody nervous, I think. But if you just take your, say, this is the face of your grapefruit. And all I did was slide down okay. like that. And it just makes a coin. You can also use a peeler like a potato peeler, Simple. fruit peeler, yeah. carrot peeler, right. peeler peeler, Less and just peel that off. Um, if you want to make it really sexy and just kind of like edge it so that your peel is nice and square on both sides. It yes. makes it really pretty. It looks, yeah. You, you drink with your eyes first. You do drink with that. Mm -hmm. that is, you always make the best drinks <laughs> as well too. You know, we want to learn more about Maker's Mark though. So we want to talk to- If there was a person. I know, if only we had is like there a, a person we could talk to. Ambassador and, too bad he couldn't be in person, but uh, we have David that we <laughs> want to talk to from Maker's Mark to tell us. And thank you so much for partnering with What You Food and Wine Festival on this. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Aloha. And uh, I really wish I could be there in person. Uh, Hawaii Food and Wine Festival was one of my favorite uh, events that I've done over my time with Maker's Mark. So I really uh, enjoy it and I look forward to being back next year. Jen and Tanya, thank you so much for having me here from the mainland. Um, great explanation on the cocktails. Both cocktails are great, you know, for, for a warm, temperate climate, highballs, they're great to drink all day. And that cocktail, uh, I had uh, maybe one too many last night after I was done with, uh, with this event. So uh, it was very delicious. And thank you, Jen, for creating such a great co cocktail on the mark. And um, I, I would love to be sitting there drinking it with you. But I'm here to tell you a little bit about Maker's Mark. And uh, I really want to tell you how much um, Maker's Mark has never changed really as a brand. You know, we started distilling whiskey in 1953 in a little small one stop flat town uh, called Loretto in Kentucky. And we had two founders, Bill and Margie Samuels, a beautiful couple. And Bill was the whiskey man and he had a taste vision. And that taste vision is what made our whiskey. It was, he wanted to create a rich, creamy, sweet 
bourbon, as you mentioned earlier, with no bitterness. And no bitterness to him meant no rye in the mash bill. And, th and that our mash bill is our recipe of grains we use. So just wheat. So we use the 70% corn, 16% soft red, red winter wheat, and 14% malted barley. And that's the recipe for Maker's Mark. And he had an equal partner in Margie Samuels. And we have a saying that the first bottle you buy because of Margie, because you think it looks beautiful and, and great on the shelf, which that was her idea. The red dripping wax, the hand-torn label, the uh, shape of the bottle, the name maker's mark, everything about it. In fact, the distillery and how beautiful our distillery is. Jen, you commented uh, how beautiful the distillery was uh, last night uh, in our event. And it, it really is truly a beautiful place. And she believed that if you wanted to come visit us that you would probably enjoy our whiskey. And um, she knew that if Bill had his way that it would be named Bill's whiskey or Bill's bourbon and it wouldn't, wouldn't stand out. So. Margie was a big equal part in, in our relationship at Maker's Mark. And so we started distilling in Loretto in 1953 and we haven't changed. If I, if I could tell you that we haven't changed, we haven't. We're purposely inefficient. Every bottle is hand dipped. Every label is hand torn. Our barrels are still rotated and we still do everything the same way we did back in 1953. We've expanded and we're a big bourbon brand, but we've never changed. And I think that's something that holds true to who we are and something I'm proud to say. So, um, uh, you know, with that, I, I don't really have too much more to tell you, but I just wanted to say thank you for having us. We're, we're happy to be sponsors here with the Hawaii uh, Food and Wine Festival, and I can't wait to be back with all of you in person next year in 2021. So thank you for having us and enjoy your dinner because it, I can tell you it looks amazing and I wish I was eating it at home right now. <laughs> so aloha and I know. Thank, you, thank you for having me. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. Thank you so thank much. You so let me turn the volume down here so we don't have that. But uh, we want to raise our glass to you and to Maker's Mark, and we wish we could teleport you here to enjoy the view and the steak with us because it really is a perfect pairing. Cheers, babe. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to everyone at home, cheers. too. Okay, they're cheersing us. I know. I see dancing going on. This is, this is a fun crowd tonight. I know. This is a party crowd. Paul, Soriano, yeah, Colleen. Thanks, everyone. Cheers to that. Anyone have questions? I got some comments here. Uh, Stacy loves the on the mark, the high ball, a little rough for her, lightweight, she says. Oh, so. uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Linda was asking the ingredients for the on the mark again. Oh yeah, so it is Maker's Mark with Rothman & Winter apricot liqueur, Grand Classico bitter. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have this, um, or if you're, if you're struggling to, to figure out the flavor profile of it, it's kind of like if you took Campari and sweet vermouth and Benedictine, so Benedictine with the honey, sweet vermouth with the wine notes, Campari with the bitter, and mix them all together. Um, beautiful. And then some peach bitters. There you go. Super easy. And uh, anyone, uh, we, I know you guys want the steak though, so we need to get the pair and people are enjoying. I see them downing. This I know, is... right, right? Careful. <laughs> <laughs> but that's so, I've, I've learned that the, the danger of my cocktails is they tend not to taste really overly alcoholic until you stand up and then you're like, oh, my knees feel funny. <laughs> yes. You've been warned. They're home. They're safe. <laughs> David's laughing. He, he, he's probably experienced that as part of the occupational hazard of it being is, a diplomat. Is. Definitely. Uh, they probably had to make sure. How do you apply for that job, by the way? How do you I think you have to know people, huh? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to present Ooh. the drink now because we can't forget about the perfect steak. So. Should we give this to Chef? We should. I think Chef Lance is waiting patiently over so. here. Chef. Here we come. All right. We are going to move over here. <laughs> you want to take it? Sure. I'll take it. There and then you go. stick around too. All right. I'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Cheers. Cheers. All right. We're going to make the steak now after we get to enjoy the drink. Delicious as usual. It is good stuff, and right? It is always so awesome. <laughs> Everyone's enjoying it at home. All right, so I know they are waiting and ready for the perfect steak. So, uh, Chef Lance, can we start by uh, showing what they have in the kit and what they need to do first? All right, so first thing is we'll get to our kit. Mm -hmm. So, you have things rubber band together, and there's numbers on it just so that we can put things together. So, it's not necessary that the things together are supposed to go together. It's just that we just rubber band them so it wouldn't spill. Okay. Yeah. That They appreciate that, everyone who picked <laughs> up their kits. So thank you. You guys think of everything here at 53 by the Sea. We try. <laughs> <laughs> so you have your dashi is labeled number two. Then you have a, um, in the bigger container, you have tomatoes, red onion, and cilantro with a chili pepper it's labeled number one. This is for your relish. And number two, you also have your stir fry sauce, which will go with the dashi. 
and then number one is the um, chili, um, lemon, and fish sauce. Yeah, that goes there. You also have your lemongrass rice, which you'll have to reheat. You can reheat it right in here. This is microwavable safe. Yeah, about minute, half, two minutes should be good. Up to you, you know, if you want it hot or not. They then, don't need to do that right now, though. No, okay. no, that's for later. All right. So, and then this is your Brussels sprouts. Yeah, so this is going to go with the dashi and the stir fry sauce. Okay. And then you have your two ribeyes. Oh. Yeah. I want to ask you why you choose ribeyes. Come to preference, or why is it that you chose this for the perfect steak cook and drink along event? Well, to tell you the truth, I like ribeye. Oh, you know, I, I, I love ribeye, but also to, you know, I think when you're cooking meat or like anything else, you want to pair things that are going to match. So because the uh, relish has like lemon juice, fish sauce, you know, salty kind of heat, and it has like, it goes with, well with fat. So this would even go well with like roast pork or something, you know? So ribeye has more fat than let's say strip loin or, you know, tenderloin. Right. So it's up to you though. I mean, cooking is very subjective in the sense of, you know, like you know, it's the perfect state. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it tastes good, you try your best to make it. You know, tonight, you're sandbagging us. No, I know you're gonna, because you know, I've had this perfect just steak have, yesterday. Just have fun, you know, <laughs> okay. just have fun. You know, everybody cooks differently. You know, you might not have the perfect pan. You might not have the perfect knife, whatever. You know, make do what, with what you got. We're yeah, exactly. It's about cooking is about yeah. cooking for somebody you care about, for your mm -hmm. family, whatever. You know, you put your heart into it. It's going right. to be good. It's not something like you're getting paid at like three-star Michelin restaurant. You know, it's, it's, it should be right. fun. I want them to have fun tonight. Are so, there ideal tools that they should have ready as far as you know, know, a cast iron skillet? What, what you know, you can have a cast iron skillet or, you know, any heavy bomb skillet. You don't have to use cast iron. Cast iron is pretty heavy, mm -hmm. you know, but anything that conducts heat evenly. And, um, you know, salt, pepper. I, you know, nowadays, like, fresh cracked black pepper is so easy because they sell them in a the store with, you know, where you just crack it yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I use kosher salt. I like diamond crystal. And then I just use canola oil. You can use whatever oil you like, but I feel that canola oil is more neutral. And um, Jeff, sorry, just for a second. I know we have a couple of comments they're asking for you to talk louder because it sounds a little bit muffled. So, uh, can we can improve the audio of the mics? Try it now. Hello, Aaron, want to serve you? Hello, we're okay. working on the perfect steak, so we need the perfect volume <laughs> yeah. too. Are we cool? <laughs> I think so. We've been unbagging and everything a little bit muffled. It says it's getting difficult. Is the volume better now? Um, We'll work through it. We'll work through it. But maybe we should start out okay. by telling them what we need to do with the steak or what, okay. what's your first step. So when you cook too, it's all about timing. Mm -hmm. So you want to make it so that at the end, when everything comes together, your meal, you're not making one thing and then you're going to wait. Oh, we're going to make this. And then you wait and you wait. So we're going to multitask a little bit. Okay. So the first thing is we're going to be like Jen said, tempering. So I'll take my steak out. And... You know, if you want to season it on a plate or something, you can. But if I was at home, I'd do it in here because save dishes. I don't need to do dishes. I like yeah? that. That's so with, when you season, think about like rain. You want an even, even amount of salt. And when you're cooking too, like some people say how much salt. But it's all like when you cook, it's common sense too in the sense of, you know, use your senses. If the steak is really, really thick, then you have to put more due to the fact that there's a greater volume that needs to be seasoned versus mm -hmm. something that's really thin, then you'd put less. And it's basically like a dry rub, but you want to do this and let it sit for a while before you throw it on. Yeah, yeah, because a long time, when I was a young cook, they said like, oh, don't season anything right before because it's going to bring out all the moisture and everything like that. But, you know, I found that temperate, get it a little bit to room temperature, let it sit a little bit. You know, the moisture comes out, pulls back in salt. I think it's good. So we'll leave that there. So while we're doing that, we'll get started on our um, relish. Yeah? Okay. And I, I'm just going to check in on the cameras. People look like they're following along. We can, yes, we get the pan ready. Okay. Yeah. Shaka, thumbs up. If not, just let me know. Okay. We got people seasoning some pepper and so forth. So great. And okay. if you have any questions, please feel free to chime in with that. But what, what are we going to be working on? Uh, we're going to be making the relish. So that's right. number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So also, too, you don't have to heat your pan up yet. The pan heats up really fast. You don't have to get it smoking hot, you know. So we'll get the relish right here. I, what I included inside the relish was a chili pepper because some people like it hotter. Some people don't. 
So if you do want it hotter, please mince it, put it in, but be careful not to touch your eye or anything else. <laughs> You've probably done that before, haven't you? So, Speaking from, from experience. Yeah. You like the spice? I do like spice. Yes. So, you know, we chose this dish because Hawaii is like warm, sunny climate. Right. You know, right now it's so humid and hot and stuff. You don't want to eat heavy foods. No. So something like a relish, like if you look at cuisines of sunny climate, they always have like heat, they have like, you know, acid, sometimes sweetness. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's what we chose to do. Plus it's easy to do. You don't have to make demi-glaze. You don't have to put cream. You don't have to go do this. You can just find tomato in your garden, whatever you want. Those are beautiful yeah? tomatoes, by the way. Tell everyone They're from those. Whole Farms. We get them in Whole Farms from Kahuku. You know, a lot of the local products are very beautiful things, you know? So those are the ones right there, you know? Mm -hmm. And so this sauce, we call it mama sauce. So this sauce is like based after one of our chefs. His mom, like she's from Thailand, so he used to always have this little stash in his a reefer. Stash yeah, so at the end of the night with the well, pulatan, you know, the scraps <laughs> of the meat and stuff that we cut up. And so she always made it with um, lemon juice, mm -hmm. fish sauce, and um, chili peppers. And what we do is we just blend it. Yeah, so they have the recipe if you want. You know, it makes a great sauce. You can put them on pork, you can put it on oysters, you know, anything you want as a condiment that you'd use like chili pepper water or any seasoning mix. So we have this sauce. So I made it for you already, but it's not as spicy as we usually do. That's why I added the chili there if you want. <laughs> I see people taking a, a little whiff, I think, to kind of question if the heat is going to be too. <laughs> so. Yeah, so use as little or as much as you want, you know. Mm -hmm. And then also, too, when you pour in your tomatoes, please make sure that you turn on a juice. Because like when you're making this relish or any other relish with tomatoes, the tomato juice is also part a component of the dish. Yeah, adds right. flavor, yeah. So make sure you put that in. I like the spin on it, kind of the relish. You used to, you know, growing up, I'm going to date myself, but kind of the mushrooms and the onion yeah, was mushroom. the typical veggie, right? Yeah, yeah, mushroom. Or potatoes. Can, you know, mushroom soup. Uh, yeah, something like yeah. that. But, you know, I mean, that's good. If it was wintertime, I love something like that, mm -hmm. you know, but because it's like summer, it's like so hot and humid, you don't really crave that. I crave yeah. something more refreshing, more light, acidic, yeah. So, like I said, these recipes are here, but it's just guidelines. Mm -hmm. uh, cook how you want to cook. If you don't like cilantro, don't put cilantro. I put something that. else, you know, mint, parsley. Put, you know, don't even put it if you don't like that. You know, you can always um, use different kind of tomatoes, mm -hmm. use different sauces. But what I want is that you understand that these are guidelines and that you can use to help you. So while this is um, sitting and marinating, you know, we're going to let this go for a second here. That's good. So you get those done uh -huh. first so we can work on the things that and so next to cook. we're going to work on a steak. All right. So, you know, like some of you might have gas, some might have electric, you know, everything's like, oh, excuse okay. me. Some things are like different. So if it's too hot and, you know, just watch, use visual cues. Like if the pan is smoking, smoking, take it off. It's too hot. You know, if there's nothing, you put your steak in and it there's no movement or a life, sign of life, then take it out, you know, and then <laughs> try again, okay. you know, so it's, it's okay. Don't worry about it. And then I know you use oil. What type of oil? This is canola because I think it's a nice neutral oil because I think that because it matches the flavor. So, I, you, you know, I felt to use like, oh, this is the greatest extra virgin olive oil. It's very strong. Mm -hmm. So if I put it in there, I think it'll contrast with the fish sauce and everything else. Yeah. So. And what temperature? I know, like you said, stovetops are different, pans are different, and, and actually you are using this. This is not your usual. No, I'm usually <laughs> used to the gas range, so right. actually I had to practice today to find out because <laughs> yesterday the thing didn't really work too good. So, <laughs> so, you know, I think, you know, look at it. When you see the oil start to shimmer a little bit, start to smoke a little bit, then you put in your steak. Yeah, so our steak's been sitting and tempering a little bit. Also, too, the cut of meat, like sometimes, too, it all depends, like, if you want something to cook fast, it's going to be thinner, but you know what? You might not get as good a, a nice brown on it because right. it's going to overcook by the time it gets there. But it depends, like, these ribeyes are kind of big, so actually I had to cut it a little thinner. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you want to find, you know, when you go to, let's say you go to the market and you buy something that's a nice thickness that you want. You know, also, too, you know, it depends, like, if you want health conscious yes. or anything else. So the oil is getting hot. So when we put in our steak, you're not going to just throw yeah. them in. You know, it's dangerous, yeah? So we're going to tilt it so the oil comes on one side, okay. and then we'll put it in so it doesn't splash. Yeah, you don't want to crowd your pan too. If it's like so tight, it's going to steam, yeah? Mm -hmm. And then same thing with this side. So, you know, we tilt it this way, put it in this way. 
Yeah. And like I said, common sense, you know, I mean, if the, you're using your fingers. I, yeah. I've never seen that method. I don't know if people have, do you recommend they do that too? Or, well, you know, I mean, you're professional. You wash your hands do not all the time. To, yeah. I yes. Mean, okay. I'm don't just checking. Touch and things like that. But for right. me, like, you know, I think, you know, when you cook too, it's about sense and feel mm -hmm. and touch. And actually, there is, isn't there some method of trying to figure out? Well, they how say, well like, when you're young, cook, they tell you, oh, if you put your hand here and you leave it like that and it's soft, that means that it's rare. If you kind of like touch it and it gets a little firmer, it's mm -hmm. medium rare. You kind of squeeze it, it's medium. If you make a tight fist and it's hard, it's well. Because when you cook, and what it's you, not yeah, the perfect steak. No. <laughs> I mean, but it's perfect to somebody. To somebody you know, I mean, it's all relative, right. you know? <laughs> Some people like it well. So you cook it how you want to cook it, you know? But I like it a little like medium rare medium. Yeah. I think so. So while this is going, you know, we have this other thing going. If you want, you can throw in your rice, you know, about a minute and a half, two minutes, or take your time. Chef, I have one question from Jason. How hot do we turn the heat and how much oil? I just put enough that what you gotta understand is oil, if you put too little bit, it's not gonna conduct. Mm -hmm. So the oil is gonna be the conductor of the heat. So if it's not enough heat oil it's not really going to cook so you just put a nice thin film and then like i said if it starts you know like you can tell if it's going to burn mm -hmm. then you just take it off start again because when oil smokes too much it means that it's hitting the smoke point right. and it's becoming breaking down and then you know like it depends too like i usually if it's a thick steak i like to keep turning it back and forth to get it even but sometimes like these these are a little thinner size because they're so the eye of the steak was so big right so, you know, ideally, if I got a little thinner one, it would be better. Mm -hmm. But so this one, I might not be able to turn it so much because it might overcook by that time. All right. You know, and so like when you cook too, like sometimes you start off with a higher heat and then you can drop it a little bit. Because when you put anything, it's like if you touch something hot, you're going to pull back, right? So the same thing it's going to come and it's going to have a circular brown and white on the top. So this way, when you put it and you start with the initial high heat and then you drop it to low, it'll relax and it'll get an even more even brown. Nice you know? and relaxed too. Yeah. And then I know the old school they say don't turn it too much, but uh, you know I like to turn it. Mm -hmm. So like I said, you know you get a little brown. Look at that. There's a nice brown on it. And then you know we'll turn it again maybe. But like this one is a little thinner than this one. Mm -hmm. so it's going to be a little harder because but if I keep turning it, it'll overcook a little bit. But you know I mean a little bit here it's not going to kill you, you know. And also too like after we cook it. We're going to let it rest while we do something. Because it's like when you all the heat is the pressure switching. Mm -hmm. You know, so like we were talking about it. It's like your day, right? You get pressure, pressure all day. You come home. <laughs> yeah. Somebody needles you. No. Explode, right? You know something. Like that. But then if you sit down. That's a different TV, type of temper. Yeah, you then you kind of just relax. So the same thing is after you cook it, all this yeah. heat, pressure, energy is going into the steak. You let it relax and it'll gradually go out. And that way when you cut it, it won't just bleed out. Mm. Yeah. So... What about your energy? Do you put your energy, like if you come in a bad mood, does that affect the steak too? I think so. I think you should be happy, you know? I, think, you know, I mean, not every day is you know, calling it rainbow, but you know what I mean? It's like- <laughs> Not even in Hawaii. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you come in and I think it's what you're doing it for, who you're cooking it right. for. You know, so like I flipped it now, it's not super brown, okay. but it's okay, you know? I mean, but this is thin. So as long as I get a nice steel on one side and then I'm just gonna do it again and let it rest. But so, you know, you can touch it and if it feels really soft, because basically what cooking is, is taking out the moisture. So when things get moist and drier, that's why like something well done is really hard. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's what you're doing. But yeah, you know, you can choose whatever steak you like. But I really like ribeye. I like more fatty cuts, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. So I'll just flip it here. So you see how it's getting nice and browner? I do see that. Is everyone following along at home? I see a few steaks, Lindsay gets her two in there. And you know, if you're using tongs, you're using whatever, just be careful. You know, you can use a fork if you want, but you don't want to poke, poke, and let all the juices come out. Right. But I enjoy this because for me, it's cleaner, you know, and that's just how I was trained to from chef. Mm -hmm. So, you know. So like I said, like also too, like cooking, like I said, is common sense. So if you have two pieces and one piece is thinner, then you pull one out. So like for medium rare medium, I'm gonna pull this one out already. All right. But maybe this one I might let go a little bit because it's thicker. Yeah. So I, I can, it affords me the time to do so, you know? 
And if it's too hot, turn it down. If it's too normal enough to heat, turn them up. Okay. You know, so you're this, not locked in. You yeah, you know, it. it doesn't matter. You know, right. it's just use your senses when you cook. Mm -hmm. So this one is a little thicker. So yeah, you see, I can go a lot longer, and it just keeps going. But um. Everyone's happy with their drinks as well while the steak cooks. The flavors really do go so well. You have to do yeah, drink up, drink up. The steak gets perfect, more perfect as we drink. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting smoking in here today. We're yeah. not gonna set off a smoke alarm or anything. I, I <laughs> asked earlier. Okay. So, so yeah, so you see, you keep doing it. So mm -hmm. it's like I said, it's not like oh, we, what time do I take it out? Which one? Just if one is thicker, take them out earlier. If not. No. Okay. So I'm just going to take out some of this oil so we don't accidentally, just in case. And I know you might need this too. And then you're pairing this with the lemongrass, jasmine rice, and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts. Uh -huh. why, why that combo? I mean, I know it works, but why? Um, well, like, I think the lemongrass, jasmine rice is really nice. It's fragrant. It has kaffir, lemongrass, um, shallot inside. And um, I think that, you know, it goes well because rice and steak. You know, like when I was young, growing up, and we had steak, and you know, you eat it with your rice, and you cut it, and the juice, the shoe goes all with the rice, and yes. so that's my favorite part, you know? <laughs> so we're going to put that, but because we're cooking in here, and we don't have an oven, normally maybe I'd cook Brussels sprouts, and, you know, put it in the um, oven to finish it, mm -hmm. but because we don't have an oven here, no. what's important is, like, this is the Brussels sprout. We tried to make it so that it's uniform in size. Because when you cook things and it's uniform in size, then that way things will cook evenly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes so sense. this is how they started off. <laughs> yeah. So we cleaned it. So we cleaned a they lot of Brussels sprouts hard. on this. The team here was cutting a lot of Brussels sprouts, right? So same thing. We'll start get our pan hot. So about temperature about medium high. Medium high, everyone, for the Brussels sprouts. And good. Jason is happy with the steak and the drink so far, I think. And Loves Brussels sprouts, so he's oh, yeah? just happy as a clam in there. So Brussels sprouts, when you think about it, and you and you think of like what, how you're gonna prepare it and like other things, think about like what you eat it with. It kind of reminds me of cabbage, right? Mm -hmm. So you put a little pig cabbage in Brussels sprouts, you know, guarantee where. Yeah. You know, you can put bacon. You know, it tastes good. You know, what else? Anything do you with tastes cabbage? good with bacon. Everything's yeah, better with bacon. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Bacon is <laughs> not a good example, but you know, I mean. You know, what else would they, like you said the other day, like kimchi, right? Mm -hmm. Guarantee you put kimchi base or something and you cook it down would be good. When you put it in too, like I said before, be careful, yeah? So right. if the oil's hot, don't just throw it in. It's going to splatter. You're a trained professional. Not everyone so, is executive chef. So, you know, I turn it. <laughs> Maybe you can be too, you know? <laughs> oh, no. So just turn it this way and then put it in this way and then drop it in. And then that way it won't splatter on you, yeah? Okay. And it was about the same amount of oil that we put yeah, in the steak I mean, as well. Just and then if coat. you don't have enough, pour a little bit in. Yeah, that's you know? okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because like I said, don't be afraid of oil. I mean, I know people are health conscious and things like that, but also too, in the sense of, you know, oil is what's going to conduct your heat. So if you put it in a dry pan, it's not really going to brown up anything. So what we want to do is we want to just get a little color and brown it. And then we're going to throw our dashi inside and that will help braise it to get it softer, faster, right. because we're not throwing it in an oven. Otherwise it'll take kind of long doing it this way. And, and about how long should people anticipate that this will take? Eight minutes, seven, eight, eight minutes. minutes. All right. You know? Also too, like, it depends too, right? If you only have a small pan and it's really piled up, mm. it'll take a lot longer because right. it's just too much. So you want a nice pan where it kind of spread out, you know? Um, you know, places where some people say like, oh, you got to put it all cut side down. Right. Side down. It's up to you if you want to do that. But mm -hmm. if I'm at home trying to get a quick, it's supposed You're to be a quick steak dinner, right? I'm not going to do that, you know? I'm just going to put it in. And, what are you really and, eating at home? You're not eating like this every night. <laughs> oh, I love sandwich to be and stuff like that. You know? <laughs> That's a real deal. My wife makes yaki soba sometimes. Oh, or so Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? Okay. So... You know, just be careful because once it starts browning, it'll brown pretty fast. But what you want to do is get the flavor because it's like the browning creates, you know, flavor. And then when you deglaze it with the dashi, the flavor will also come into the Brussels sprout. So they're like little sponges. They're going to absorb yeah. the flavor, you know? So you want it basically sort of caramelized. Yeah, so you see how it's starting wow, it's to brown up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you see, I put the oil, but it's already, it, it sucked it all up already. So like, you know, if you want, you can always add a little more. You don't want it dripping in oil. You yeah. know, some people too, like if you do have an oven and you want to cook a batch at home, you can always do it on a sheet tray. 
you know, toss it in the oil, season it, lay it on a sheet tray, you know, and then bake it in the oven. Smart. Too. Would that make it, I mean, because some people like it a little bit more al dente. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it soft, but a little bite, you know, like, like not mushy. No. And why did you choose the uh, dashi and, you know, the, the different sauce for this? Well, I think like, you know, a lot of times you go to restaurants and sometimes you get Brussels sprouts, it's always with bacon. It's, you know, kind of like mainland preparation. But, you know, growing up when you eat this kind of like cabbages and stuff, you eat them with like stir fried and things like that. And the dashi just adds umami, you know, mm -hmm. the fit flavor. So, you know, with the dashi inside, it just adds a boost of flavor. So when you put that, you're adding flavor. Then when you add a little bit of, of the stir fry sauce, more flavor. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're cooking, you're just trying to build layers of flavor. And the main thing is that the end, it tastes good. You know, I definitely agree with that. So let's see, I'm checking in. It looks like we have a few pans on the Brussels sprouts. Everyone's getting in on the action. Yeah. What is the, the key to doing this? Do you want to flip them constantly so they're evenly cooked? Through? Yeah, you don't want it to burn on one side. You kind of want it to get a little brown like that, you know, and then like two. If you need to turn up your heat, you can turn it up. You need to put a little more oil, you can. Okay. You might just put a little bit more, but you don't want to put too much. You see, you can hear it, right? I as can soon hear as I it. put that, it started cooking more mm -hmm. because now it's a little more. But you don't want it so oily that when you add it, it's going to be like, I don't know what you call that, like chapstick on your mouth, you know? Like, <laughs> uh, uh, we have a question from Nidia. I, I might be not a Brussels sprouts fan. So is there something you could recommend that she could substitute to have a similar uh, type of? You can. Do it with whatever you want. You like asparagus, mm -hmm. if you like, you know, whatever vegetable you like. I mean, I was going to say cabbage, but no makes sense because same thing. But, same know, family, yeah, right? <laughs> kind of like it. But, you know, I mean, you can put whatever you want. Maybe if you more like broccoli or you mm -hmm. like something. Mm -hmm. But just remember that, you know, different vegetables have different cooking times. So broccoli, if you go, maybe it's as long as this, it might overcook because the florets might come real mushy. Yeah? So what you can do is cut off the florets, use a stock, and then put the... Um, so I'm just gonna add the um, dashi in now. All right, everyone following along? Get the yeah. dashi in. And so now while this is going, what you can be doing, like I said, if you didn't heat your rice, go heat your rice now. You know, think about what kind of plate you're gonna serve it with. If you're gonna make your cocktail, you know, maybe if you didn't wanna drink before, you can make your cocktail now while this is going. And so when this is done, then we'll plate up our steak and we're good. So the, we're waiting for the liquid to dissolve. Uh -huh. It'll continue to brown. Yeah. And so through. it'll evaporate in a little while. And what it is is that you know it's gonna not only season it, but also you know help cook the Brussels sprouts because, like I said, now the dashi becomes the medium for the you know for cooking the heat. Uh, question, uh, Jason. Thank you for you know going ahead and chat when you have a question. Which one is the dashi, the dark or the pale or liquid? The dashi is the Larger container, mm -hmm. okay. the white one. All right. Yeah. It's the one with the most liquid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yep. if someone doesn't have a microwave, they can heat up the rice and you can a just, pan. yeah, a pan, put a little bit, maybe just sprinkle a little bit of water and just mm -hmm. cover it. Okay. So that I'll keep it intact too. And good on you. I, I went years without a microwave, but I've got one now. So. <laughs> What's your favorite way to have the Brussels sprouts? You know, I kind of like it like this because at home, I don't want to turn on the oven. I don't want to, <laughs> I make try to cook it with as least pans as possible because, mm -hmm. you know, you come home tired. Huh? So, no, I know, it would be the last thing I would So I would cook it something like this and then I like to hit it with like suyu or, mm. you know, something like that. I mean, one time we we're playing around because we we're eating it and me and some of the guys were like, hey, look like a kind takoyaki a little bit. <laughs> so then we put, we cooked it like this and then we had the, Somebody had like a stash of bulldog, you know the <laughs> oh bulldog sauce. sauce. Oh, yeah. I know that. Yeah, so you put course. that on top, and Ooh. then we put some um, cupy mayo and yeah. some um, katsuo <laughs> plate. It's pretty good. Yeah, like our um, makeshift um, takoyaki, yeah. basoyaki. We're going to try call it, but bulldog sauce. I know that yeah. takes me back to childhood. <laughs> yeah, so we're thinking like, oh, we can make basoyaki, you know. <laughs> but, but that's what what I mean is that like cooking is like whatever you want. You can try it. You know, sometimes you get inspired by just shapes and things like that, but main thing, it tastes good. But you know it tastes good, right? Because when you eat okonomiyaki and stuff like mm -hmm. that, all that cabbage, and you have it's that. True, so it makes right. sense, right, to right. have that. Mm -hmm. And I, I will say, we had an event yesterday where we made this up too, and a few people who said they don't normally like Brussels sprouts 
like your version of Brussels sprouts, probably because it evoked those flavors that they know. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, maybe they're hungry. Hungry is the best sauce, huh? <laughs> True, and the so. combination of all the flavors with the relish. Uh, Susan says, Chef Lance loves the dinner. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So, well, this is coming down now. Now you have your little container, the other one, labeled number two. And what is that again? Just this is... Everyone. We call it SOS, soy oyster sesame. Oh. Yeah. So if we're making normal stir fry, we'd always start with show you in the pan because mm -hmm. you want that sear, initial sear, you get that smell, yeah? yeah. And it helps with the stir fry. And then we put a little bit of oyster, you know, for a little bit of body and a little bit of salt. And then we put sesame. What's the ratio? Here. Is it? I don't know. I just went <laughs> two teas, I mean, two teaspoons soy, one teaspoon oyster one okay. teaspoon sesame right. because i mean what Let's you got to think of when you're cooking it with it is like the shoyu is the salt uh, mm. and the oyster just to add a little more flavor and it's also salt and then the sesame is fat you yeah. know to add that so you know if you want more like i said if you want if you taste it and at you're at home and you get like shoyu oyster sesame and it's not strong enough for you or you rather have more sesame and stuff but i mean do so you chop furukake inside at the end show you know what i mean yours <laughs> yeah so now while it's still like that i'll add a little bit of the i'll add all of the sauce inside yeah mm -hmm. and does that help caramelize it just from you know it, it'll, and the... yeah it'll kind of like get gooey a little bit and so what we're going to cook it too is we're not going to cook it super dry but we're going to let it kind of like meld into the the flavor will melt and then it will get like kind of adhere to it yeah mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, I hope you guys are having fun. That's the most important thing. It's not like, oh, I gotta follow it so precise and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when you're cooking and cooking with your family, your kids or something, you know, have them do things, you know, teach them. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> they can yeah. hopefully be better than me too. <laughs> I think people are having fun and seeing them enjoying the maker's marks right by their <laughs> oh, good. cooking stations. Keep drinking and the yes. people, their steak, steak will come more perfect. <laughs> exactly. How are you liking the drink, everyone? Clark just took another swig. Yes. All right, both of you. <laughs> Great. And Julian has his drink and yeah. Um, and you've already thought about how you're going to plate it. Are you going to? Put you know, the... I mean, if you're at home and you want to do family style, mm -hmm. then I separate everything. But I definitely put the relish onto the steak. And the reason why I cut the steak is I want that juices from the meat to mingle with the sauce. And that, Get yeah, there. it gets in there and it's really, really good. So, you know, the rest of the stuff can be kept separate. But, you know, I definitely cut it. And like I said, if you want to cut it in half, and then cut it this way to make it smaller bite size. That's easy too. Or if you just want to go straight it up and down and give everybody forks and you know knives. I might too. want the whole thing with myself though. <laughs> hey, all go for it. <laughs> it is good. And how are those looking? What do you think? I of? think they're getting soft. You yeah, know. Do you just? I mean, you can taste as you go too. You know, the thing is too is like people say like, oh, how do I know if it's done? Or how right. do I know if there's enough salt? Mm. Eat it. Taste. Try it. You know <laughs> well, what I mean? Like. What's so hard? Like, also, obviously, the small ones are going to cook more. Kind of help. This bugger got in there. But, you know, we tried to make it, like, as uniform as possible so they cook evenly. But, you know, it's not going to be perfect like anything else. But so, you know, sometimes I'll poke the biggest one or the smallest one. If you're super anal and you want to be, like, then you know what? You can pull out the smaller ones first or, uh -huh. you know, you throw those in last. Okay. But, there you, go. you know, I mean, this is, it should be casual dinner. This is mm -hmm. not supposed to be, like, Oh, super stressful, super, you know. And but some people might like it more charred too. So yeah. it just depends on the taste. And then also too, if you like it softer or mm -hmm. it's not as soft to your liking, then when it kind of evaporates, add more liquid. Okay. You know, you don't necessarily have to add more dashi because the dashi is going so you the still have the sodium and the flavor. So you can just add a little more water. Because okay. if you keep adding just dashi, dashi, and it keeps reducing, it might come too strong. Okay, you don't want to do that. You yeah. want to overpower. So now you, you can hear it too, right? Like I said, you know, you take visual cues and when you cook and things right. like that. You can hear it getting louder, right? Mm -hmm. As it evaporates, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of like thing we'll... We're listening for you know, that. Yeah, you know, and, it's, and as you cook more and you do it, you're not going to cook the perfect steak in one day. Just because you take this class. Wait, wait, it's going to take time. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it takes a long time. We still yeah. make mistakes, but right. you'll get these things. And so when you're doing it, you kind of get this timing in your head too. Like on the line, you can see sometimes guys are cooking it. 
and it's like the oh sh you know but it's because <laughs> it's in your head like oh i forgot something in the oven or something and yes. you go and it's like oh just in time are we know? at that stage where don't blow it and go do something in the yeah, back definitely and, yeah. because you see look right Tanya, the thing is all oh, getting dry already yeah so we gotta focus on brussels sprouts i think everyone probably at the same level Alisa uh, says so hungry and it smells so good it does smell hey, good hunger is the best sauce yes so it is too food. and uh but yeah the person in that top corners one is nice <laughs> that one's ours oh that's ours. <laughs> <laughs> wow it, <laughs> i was gonna say wow pirates. it looks like it looks like <laughs> ours like wow they're really following good so uh, i guess you know good. but there is one over here that's this, okay this, how about Lindsay's? L Lindsay's. yeah yeah, yeah Lindsay's with the, oh colleen yeah show us show us your pants they look good too the yeah. steaks look great colleen. Wow, oh shade now no that's great too what is that called? Affirmations. My Brussels sprouts are nice. <laughs> I thought you were being sarcastic. Robin and Piave are loving the on the mark. They said it's awesome. Wait till yeah. you have it with the steak. And those Brussels sprouts, they do look fantastic. So now it's getting a little drier and, you know, color and everything. You know, it's absorbing. So now you can go a little more if you want. But I think for me, I think it's good. So I'm just okay. going to turn it off. All right. And then we'll put it in a bowl. So hopefully yours looks like these ones because it does the look good. <laughs> if not, keep it going a little Sorry, bit. I'm, a cook. I'm not technologically savvy, so <laughs> I have no idea what these screens are. I <laughs> should have never looked at the computer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone's asking how you make the dashi. Oh, the dashi? Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you want to make it like a purist and you put like the kombu and the mm. katsu and stuff, but you know what? Go to the store, go buy the Hondashi. They have good brands like Yamaki like that. Okay. that no, M Some people say no MSG and stuff. It's fine. I mean, for this, unless... A little. Yeah, but gonna, you know, yeah. so it's super interesting flavor. when you talk about food and cooking because there are some people who say like, oh, MSG and things, but then, right. you know, you read these articles and there's no it's proof that it's never time. ever proven that MSG has caused anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, so we're almost ready to plate. Do you let those sit for a while too, or just while we're building? No, it's our just plate? while we're building. Okay. So you see, that's hot. You have your hot rice. Mm -hmm. You know. All right. Let's see how we're doing at home. Whatever that looks like there, in full cooking mode. So we'll put that there, <laughs> and oh. then we'll take our steak. Mm -hmm. So now it's rested. Yeah. So it basically stopped cooking. Now, I know some people, when they have a thicker, like a tender one, they might cover it, but that keeps it cooking. This one just Yeah, like sometimes people it. say, cook your turkey, like, and tent it, right. or your prime rib, or something. But we don't want it to keep cooking. No. We just want it to rest. All right. So. Let me see. Okay. And then you're going to cut it. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. So just cutting it. Is that against the grain? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can fan it, but like this way, all the juices will now go in between. Ooh, yes. So we're going to plate it So the here. relish and all the flavors yeah. will just get in there. And two of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, cook it how you want and then. That scares me. I won't use that technique when I try and do it. Yeah. And what do you call this dish? Do you have a special name for it? Um, you know, in honor of his mom, we just call it Mama's Steak. Mm. No, seriously. It, was, it said on the menu before. Really? It, Mama's Steak. Mama's Steak. And so, like, for me, I'll take this juice a little bit, and I'll just pour it on the top. That's amazing. Yeah. And then we'll take our relish. All right. And you put how much you want. Okay, so everyone can see. Chef's gonna start layering the relish right on top of the perfectly cooked ribeye. And that has a lot of juice too. You wanna let that on there as much as mm -hmm. possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, you don't have to fit it all on, but no. <laughs> this is for two people, and we're thinking like you're gonna plate each person's plate. Mm -hmm. But I just, because I had two, I don't get one plate, so I just plate it on both. <laughs> And family style too. Yeah. And so now you have all the juice and the flavor in here. You can just pour it on. Okay. Wow, that looks great. Yeah. 
And then, because I forgot to bring another bowl, I'm going to wipe this one. <laughs> it works. <laughs> and I'm going to put the lemongrass rice inside. OK. Here we go. I know people must be getting eager to eat this. This is amazing. It's a great And so, you know, we didn't really talk about the rice, but the lemongrass rice is just um, jasmine rice with lemongrass, um, shallot, kaffir, lime leaf. Mm -hmm. But what's most important is that when you um, season it, you can use any medium of flavor. So if you wanted to put okay. dashi, you wanted to put chicken stock, you wanted to put water, coconut, you wanted to go maybe half no. coconut milk, half mm -hmm. stock. Um, but the most important thing is you understand like the ratio. So the ratio would be one part rice to one and a half cup liquid, one and, and a half part liquid. So like right. if you had six cup rice, it'd be nine cup liquid, Okay. you know? So Do you know your, your math and science here. <laughs> uh, so hey kids, just remember in school, you gotta know. <laughs> So I don't know yeah. how you want to put it, but yeah, let's see. How's everyone doing at home? So check in and what stage they're at. Looks like we got some Brussels sprouts coming off. And so the flavors are nice because you have the great cut of the ribeye, but a little bit of those Asian flavors that really pair well with the meat and then the drink too. So everyone's in for a treat when they have all these flavors together. Oh, I forgot I had this stashed. Oh, that's the right, the special, yes. You can put garnish, whatever. So I had some um, from my friend, Halika'a. He has um, this micro cilantro. Wow. And it's very, very strong. You want to try? I do. I love cilantro. So. Oh, you do? I know. People are either in the love or yeah, can't stand I mean, cilantro. You think it's camp, small, it's it. real, but it's very flavorful. Yeah. Serve it like that. Love it. That's it. So you have the hookup. Your friend does that. So. Yeah, yeah, I get it from him. Uh, we did have a question. Someone was wondering what your take was on sous vide. You know what? Sous vide is good, mm -hmm. but you should learn how to cook normal first. Okay. And then, <laughs> no, no, it's true because you know what? I'll use sous vide. Like, let's say we had a banquet and I have to okay. cook 20 prime ribs. I can't. I don't have enough oven space. Right. So maybe you can sous vide it, but you have to understand. But if you don't know what you're looking for, mm. then you're not going to understand it. You know, so it's like you should running learn, before you walk. Yeah, okay. you know, learn how to cook first, learn how to season it. <laughs> then Get it. use sous vide as another tool for yourself. Okay. You know, like don't just do that and then all of a sudden, hey, the, soup, the immersion circulator broken. Oh, chef, I cannot cook the steak. Mm. You know what I mean? It should be like, oh, I can roast something. Right. But, you know, we have this banquet, we got to do 20, we don't have all the space and stuff. So we're going to sous vide it first, sear it, mm. you know, or banquets or things like that where it's a good tool. Then you know how because then you're gonna know like oh this is the temperature i'm looking okay. for so it, it's perfect but it's great it's super convenient at home i do that because our cat sometimes the thing wasn't feeling well so i mean chicken so i just put it in there with no seasoning for nothing. your cat yeah and then luckiest cat no and then i just use my because i hardly cook at home so i never use my sous vide things so i was like oh, wow. look it. and then just go. put it in the bag and put it inside and lucky you know, cat too do you have an instant pot too do you do the whole instant I, pot? I got one my sister got me you one did. and i just tried it mm -hmm. but you know i'm never home to cook too much so <laughs> you're here you're but yeah you want to try the steak yes please that you here, never asked hopefully you, everyone's um, coming along too. oh we have the utensils the, this time <laughs> utensils this time too um, oh, oh yeah. yeah oh thank Last you come in hey welcome back all right and if you guys see my, my fashion tips, I was taking from Jason. <laughs> on shot. So yesterday, I had to go and prep everything. So I didn't get to watch. I this. know. Well, get to try I just this. watched everybody on the Zoom screen. Yes, did you get to see them it's enjoying your drink too? So I feel bad because we were talking about how hot and lovely it was here, but there's people on the Zoom from Washington and oh, California. Oh, wow. You know what? Maybe the chilies will fuck you up too, you know? <laughs> Oh, you know, there's a few comments too before we get to taste this. Uh, Jenny Wood says, This is my husband's birthday dinner and I Yay! don't usually cook. And he is super impressed. I love oh. Jenny Wood. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well, what a meal to celebrate with. All right, should we go in for it? Yeah, go for you it. Plates? I brought plates. Oh, oh you, you brought well. plates? Thank you, Jen Aqua, mixologist and everything else. Yeah. The relish is amazing, oh, says Jenny ahead. too, who cooked the uh, celebration meal. Uh, I'll ask a question about the lemongrass in the chunks of the rice and the leaves. Um, there's, do you, the do you cook them in big chunks with the rice and the leaves and then take out? So what I normally do is if yeah. I was to make it on the stove, I just take like peel off method. Mm -hmm. So I take like the lemongrass, I leave it as big as possible so it's easy to pick out. Okay. I'll just clean it, that trim the ends, take off the ugly part, 
you get on the mallet and just smash it. Just cut it down. Yeah, you know, just smash it. That's therapeutic. So it's uh, kind of like macerate the flavors. Okay. You know, almost like muddling, like what she does. Mm -hmm. And then I'll take the kefir lime leaves, smash it in my hand. The shallots, I'll peel and cut thin. Mm -hmm. And then I'll saute it in a little oil. Okay. And I'll throw the rice in and coat it with the oil. And then I'll throw the stock, bring it up to a boil, and then season it with salt. But season it kind of heavy like the ocean because you know what? Because it's rice and starch, if you season it normally when it cooks, it's going to taste super under seasoned. It's okay, but you can always add salt. But then as soon as it comes out, all the lemongrass kefir comes to the top. Okay. So pull it out, mm -hmm. let it rest, and then mix it. The shallots, you can leave in and eat. And people can use onions if they can't find shallots. Yeah, that's okay. fine, you know. Yeah, we had that question before. All right, we want to try this. Do you, you, you want to get everybody's screens are all empty now? I know. They're <laughs> so, yeah. Are they eating out, oh, Lindsay? Yeah, everyone, Megan, they're Yay. going for hey, it. Look, there's this nice Nana. That's ours too. Yeah, where is the birth <laughs> where is the birthday boy too? Let's see if Lindsay, we can do that. All right, Lindsay I'm gonna try had, a little bit of rice too. Let's Lindsay's see. screenshots are like she had the camera on herself the whole time. It was super <laughs> awesome. And then was it Megan that did the flip? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brussels sprouts was amazing. Impressive, impressive. You're gonna try some too, John, oh, right? Yeah. The drink. Yeah. Get okay. in there. Thanks, Chef. Yeah, yes, yeah, this yeah. is amazing. And I did see a comment who's saying, please, please, please keep doing events like this after the pandemic. Oh yeah. So we're super happy that Food and Wine Festival has been able to do this. Oh, this one's not gonna work well, sorry. <laughs> I know. I'll go that way. Uh -huh. I have some here. <laughs> I'll go with a smaller piece. I'm excited. When I was They're little, relish. I didn't like Brussels sprouts because they look like tiny brains. <laughs> I hadn't but thought about that. I thought that. they were cool because I thought they looked like baby cabbages. <laughs> How's everyone enjoying? We're about to dig into okay. I'm gonna go on no, side some of, of the flavors. No, no, stay there, okay. stay there, yeah. No, the whole tomatoes are delicious. I know. Do you have your cocktail? I have it. It's delicious. Exactly. I know. Should, what's your taste test? I'm going in for the meat too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> the relish. That's good. <laughs> oh my gosh, delicious. It's so good. I know everyone's happy at home. The flavors are perfect. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. like we work together. Yeah, like <laughs> you did work together, so you know <laughs> you know each other's repertoire. Oh, this is so fun. I want to read just a few of the comments too, and then please show us your finished plates too. I know we've seen some of them. Megan oh, says. Yeah, let's see it. Good times and drinks got us going. Yay, Jen. <laughs> Jen's drinks always do. Um, now we can eat our Brussels sprouts. <laughs> uh, Sue says, thank you for this great evening lesson. We will be cooking this on the weekend. Nice. Good. All Good. right. Inspiring that. Um, we have another question. Nydia says, did you add coconut milk to the rice? No, no. no this we, was just, well, I just used water. Because, we just talked about you could yeah, use, you could use it. You know, understanding that if you know the ratio of liquid to rice, then you mm -hmm. can do whatever you want. You can make you know, mushroom stock, dashi, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. You can change the aromatics, you know, so if, you know, dashi and lemongrass might not taste good. So if you put mm -hmm. dashi, maybe shiitake mushroom or mm -hmm. something would match or green onion, you know, so if you put the half coconut milk, half stock, because it might be too oily. Right. So if you went half, half, and then you did it with the lemongrass, it probably would work, right? Mm -hmm. It's good. You, that sprinkled toasted coconut on the end. Oh, yeah, toasted you know. coconut. You know, at our house, whenever we're reheating rice, because we are also a house that doesn't have a microwave, we um, usually use coconut oil on it. Mm. So that would be a good way to kind of infuse mm -hmm. that coconut flavor into mm -hmm. it. Super tasty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, wait, this looks nice. Who's is this? Ooh, Colleen. Colleen. Wow. Nice. Yep. Are people taking pictures for oh, Instagram? I like the Hawaii they food should. one again, too. Impress <laughs> all your... <laughs> I did the same thing the top. I was like, oh, that one's nice. That one's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> see everyone's enjoying how and how are the drinks coming i wonder how kids are going oh, oh yeah everybody shut there yay yeah i think they're enjoying <laughs> eating and drinking that's um, awesome this drink is great i know it's this really good. is really good <laughs> thank you everyone for well, probably along but um there are great food and wine festival events coming up the one you have a great dinner here calling yeah, master 14 you know what you're going to be preparing yet can you tell anyone? it's supposed or? to be a masquerade so i'm just going to call it stuffed cabbage <laughs> 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 there you go. We're gonna have uh, visiting chef Raphael Lunetta from California and MW's team yep. as well. Reading Michelle. Yeah, we all work together a long time too, so it's, it would be nice. Oh, it's gonna be like a family reunion. Yeah, definitely, nice. definitely. And a, a fun play on the mask since we've all been wearing the mask. And mm -hmm. normally we're wearing them too, but yeah. <laughs> all right. Does anyone have any final questions or comments? The drink pairs 
well with the steak, says Cody. Yay, we did a good job. Doing. Yeah, we yes, did a good job. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's a good team here. Stacy says, can you please resend the recipes with the actual ingredients for all the sauces? Ooh. They want to be able to replicate this yes. at home. I, yes, we can definitely yes, manage I, that. Yeah, I says yes. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Yeah, the dashi and everything. Anything you want, be sure to comment. Oh. Clark and Co, what's going on over there? I know. I know, is it good? Yay! <laughs> is Clark your first name or your last name? Are you the Clarks? Last. Okay, okay last. Well, nice to have you here. It looks like it's a good date night. It looks like we have a few date nights going on now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Megan's having fun. I think she's enjoyed the Maker's Mark. <laughs> That's Ready where our dancing girls party. in the beginning, I think. <laughs> our dancing Megan in the beginning. This is so fun. I know we really. Enjoy I don't know this. if we're making good like television right now, but like I'm, I'm enjoying watching everybody. <laughs> I know we've been locked up at home too, so it's uh, not so we have seen each other and usually at the real event. Yeah. So delicious, adding this to our weekly menu rotation. Oh, nice. Ashlyn, nice. We're loving it. Good. But it, like I said, you know, you can use this relish and think about it this way, and mm -hmm. look at inspired. You can make a chimichurri, something where it doesn't take a lot. You know, you just have a knife, cutting board, herbs, you know, chili pepper flakes, garlic. Mm -hmm and some olive oil, some vinegar, and do whatever, you know? How about the cheers to chef? Yeah. Great steak. Cheers yeah. to Jen for the drinks. Cheers to the wine festival. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And the 53 by the sea, and everyone at home, too. Yeah, yeah thank you guys. Oh, Yosh. What's up, Yosh? <laughs> Jenna's on there. Oh. Say hi to Jenna. Hey, Jenna. <laughs> that was great. I'm yeah. the most, I'm, I'm a You're doing guy, good. Yeah. You're doing good. <laughs> I'm going to cheers again. Ready? Yes. We're going to go forward. All right. Ready? One, two, three. Cheers. Oh, you actually, actually touch, I went to, okay, there we go. Not social distance. I know, like, cheers. Ah, okay, we did it. <laughs> We're like, ah. <laughs> Very loud to do that. I know. It's going to be on the news. Yeah. I know. And Thanks, then they everyone, that. for joining us. Uh, be sure to check out HawaiiFoodWineFestival.com. Yes. A bunch of events coming up, including the masquerade event. Yeah here at 53 by the sea, but hawaiifoodwinefestival.com. And thank you guys. Uh, thanks thank you. Like, for coming over and hanging out with us. Of course. Yeah. Let's Yay. do it again tomorrow. We'll yeah, another sure. one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm up the whole week, the whole week. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.